So at this point, we've got a project where we've got these various features. Um, this structure has been set up, and we've got this little bit of interactivity with personalize. Um, we want to add another bit of interesting interactivity, which is the map feature. With our point of knowledge, we are able to create a basic mapping feature because the concept of this project is first it's going to be a website, then it's going to be an app, and throughout it we're going to have the ability for people to get driving directions to the campus. This is the unofficial uh, college's app. We uh, are then going to want people to come to the college. If we're showing such amazing classes like, you know, COM 101, we want people to come and to the campus to take the class. So we'll set up the ability for people to see where is the campus located, and then give me directions to the campus. That, of course, can be tweaked. If this were your own project, think about how you might find it useful to have the mapping feature of your, of your app. If I'm a bakery, you know, and I sell cupcakes at my store, and I want people to come to my store, I can put my various store locations on a map, get driving directions. This has lots of features, or lots of uses. The way we'll use it for this project is directions to our campus. Let's do this for a moment. Go ahead and go to your web browser, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, extra research here. If you go do a search, apparently it's like in the anniversary of the ballpoint pen, 117 years. Um, but search for um, Google Map API. So I'm on Google, I'm doing a quick search. Google Map API, you'll get you know, 8 million results. And uh, the ones we're going to look at briefly are, uh, let's first look, if you get the result of W3 schools, let's look at that one for a moment. So W3 Schools, as I've said before, has a, a plethora of uh, tutorials on, on everything, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And there's a whole section here that talks about how to make Google Maps. So just briefly looking here, an API is an application programming interface. It's how do we interface with something else. How does our application interface with something else via programming? Uh, we're going to write code to connect to Google servers to display a map on our website or app when we get to the apps next month. This is going to be a tutorial that you can go through, but in general, going down here, relatively small amount of code, but that will create a very basic map. Uh, so if you see here some, uh, there's a div to display a map. It's got an ID. Then there's some JavaScript function, my map. We're defining a variable map canvas so that we can uh, reference the object of map up here. Various map options, we'll explain what these are, but there's a something called center, there's something called zoom. Then there's, okay, map object, create a new Google map. New Google map object. That is able to work new Google Map. That is able to work because we need a reference to the Google Map API, the Google Map JavaScript file on the Google servers. And so I think if we look at this, it's a very, very basic map, but there it is there. It is real. You can zoom in and do all of that. So the code to display a Google Map is not that complex. The big secret is that we need a reference to their JavaScript. Ours will do something like this, and that it's going to be a real map pointed to this campus, but it's also going to do turn-by-turn -turn directions. It's going to check where is the person uh, checking the map on their device, where are they in the, in, in the world, and then give directions. Go on Main Street, take a left, go on the 5, etc., and then get to this campus. So this intro to Google Maps is not quite complete enough for us to do what we need to do, but you might want to look at it to learn a little bit more, like check changing overlays and your markers and icons and all of that. Drawing a flight path, apparently. 
So you can go research the Google Maps uh, tutorial on W3 Schools. That's the second result that I got here. The first result is straight from the horse's mouth, <coughs> straight from Google, all of the details in great detail. If you click on the top result there, which is at developers.google.com slash maps. So we'll take a quick look here. Google Maps API, Google Developers. The home page here will tell you here's what's new, getting started, why you want to use this, all of these possibilities. And yes, there's the standard version, which is free, and then there's the premium one, which gives you more powers, which is not free. Uh, just goes on and on. How do I get it to work? Well, the um, this portal here has a, the documentation and the pricing and so forth and all the different platforms. Technically we're not on the Android platform yet, but here's the code for how that works. We have the web version of the code, web services, which must be some difference. Um, what I want to look at Let's look at the web platform. So when you see the web icon on the top there, click that. Uh, here's how to do it via JavaScript, static maps, examples of who's using it, like Allstate, Google Maps, JavaScript. Demos and code snippets. Okay. So this is going to be, this would be a whole, you know, week or more of instruction to get really good at it, to get it to do what we want. We're going to use again a framework, a starting point to allow us to do what we want. If we want to customize it further, we're able to, of course, we're able to go back to the documentation, read every nuance about it and make it do exactly what we want, what you want. What I want is that we want this map that gives us directions to the, the college. So I've got a starting point for us. So you can look at Google Maps uh, homepage on your own. What you should do now is let's go back to the network folder. I have a, fi a starting point file here for us. Go back to classroom data into our project folder and copy. Don't just open it. Copy map.html to your project. Copy the map HTML file over to your current project. So let's look at this starting point, map.html. Once you've copied it over, then open it in uh, Notepad. Okay, so when we look at this in Notepad, this has got uh, 122 lines, it's commented, it's complete. If you run it in your browser, I'm going to run it in uh, Firefox. In Firefox, it, it loads up and it pops up share location. I'll say, yeah, share location. Since I'm on a desktop computer without a good GPS antenna, I get actually I think the college is data center over in downtown San Diego area but if I were to run this on a real device with real GPS it would give me real coordinates so it is a map you know uh, fully interactive zooming in zooming out satellite view etc you can even do street view drop myself down on Ivy Street Okay, that's nice, but um, we've got a button, Get Directions. Click on that, and it, okay, it may or may not work. Let me run it in Chrome here. Okay, so that one, Chrome gave me slightly different uh, results as well. This one's giving me a starting point of San Diego Convention Center. We'll see why in a moment get directions. 
Okay, so for testing purposes, you can see, remember again, the example project. I'll explain why ours may not fully work. But in the example project, which is what we're doing, you can go see map, and it'll give the driving directions. What's happening is that the um, Google Maps is so popular, now they want you to register to use it. If you poke around a little bit in the developer's console, if it's not working, it'll say Google Maps API warning, no API key. This was implemented probably like two months ago, maybe three months ago. You used to be able to use Google Maps without really registering to use Google Maps. And very recently, they changed that in the middle of our class last in the summer, actually. So we'll address this in a moment. So if it doesn't quite do the get directions part, that's okay. I, I planned for it. But um, in theory, what this is supposed to do is send you give you turn-by-turn -turn directions from your location over to our location or whatever location we set so we'll address that in a moment again uh, I'm just gonna double check it here on a real device remember you can go visit you can go visit the project on a device vmcinc.net slash mobile or my SDCE Okay, so on my uh, on my mobile, it is fully doing it again because we're on a desktop device. It may not quite behave as it's supposed to. We are assuming a person's going to see it on a mobile device. Um, so on my mobile device, it is seeing it is seeing a location and giving giving me a map. There is there is a map there. Now what we have then in our project here, let's break down what we've got. It's pretty well documented. Uh, but notice there's a relatively small amount of uh, body content. There's the section, the section container for the page, an ID of map. There's a header, we've seen that before, H1 article that's nothing new is a little uh, little uh, div here as well UI bar a corner all UI shadow that's a different way of uh, creating this you see this rounded corner box with a little bit of padding around it um, that's right there UI bar corner UI shadow you can play with that a little bit uh, there's another div to display the map. It's 350 pixels tall. If I want a taller one or percentages, I can do that. I can change that, you see. The actual map canvas. These are all being named with ID, so we can reference them. There's a div, data role, field contain. This is a form. Now this form is done a little bit different than we've seen before with the form tag. This one um, uses also the um, the jQuery data role of field contain. There's a label, map destination, target destination, input. Wait a minute, that doesn't appear on screen, does it? Well, there's a style. There's an inline style, display none. Uh, and then an input box also of display none. If you, if you experiment with this, line 24 and 25, if you change display none to display block, you'll also see it at the end of this address. Display block. T 
target destination, the address to this location. So there's an ending destination there on lines 24 and 25 that has been hidden. If we wanted the user to put their own ending destination, we could. It doesn't quite make sense for what we want. We want people to always have a way to come back to the location we tell them, which is here. If this were your own app, you can easily change the ending destination right here under value. You put any valid address and that's it. The ability for the person to get turn by turn directions to where you tell them is right there. We, we'll still break, out, break down the rest of the code. But if you're using this for your own purposes, for your own business, to give direct driving directions back to your showroom, that's where you change it to um, that's where you change it for um, the destination. It's hidden. The user doesn't need to put a destination here, but they can put, you know, one, two, three, fake street, and it would give turn by turn directions to fake street. Why would we want that? We want the user to come to our campus. So I'm going to leave those two actually display none. I'm just showing you what those two are doing. There's a button, data roll button, ID, etc. Get directions. There's another div. Results, display none, directions. So there's another element which is hidden and will not display until necessary. Putting display block at the moment doesn't do anything useful. It's an empty div with nothing inside of it. And so what's happening inside of the actual body is a little bit of the setup. What makes it actually work then is JavaScript starting on line 37 and going all the way to 118. So how it actually works is, a, is all of these lines. And this is a variation of what we saw over on W3 Schools and more stuff from the document documentation at Google Maps. And if I jump all the way down at the bottom, original concept from and then an address. Raise your hand. How many of you have heard of stackoverflow.com before this class? Okay, a few people. If you haven't heard of stackoverflow.com, it's this amazing place where people go uh, ask questions and answer questions on just about every programming language, like JavaScript. So if, I've, if I'm writing my code, I can't figure out my code, I can go to stackoverflow.com and ask the world. Uh, this question on my JavaScript, and there's lots and lots of helpful people there. If you follow that link, if you double click that, it goes over to someone that had asked the question, clean example of directions with Google Maps and jQuery modes? Not really a question, but someone asked the question, and um, someone saying, I'm trying to do this, and then all of these answers. Yes, if, any, if this is a public forum where any crazy person can write any crazy answer, well, how do you get anything done? Voting people vote on the better answer because people check the result, upvote it if it's good, downvote it if it's not. So lots of people are giving results or responses to how to do what we want, which is to create turn-by-turn -turn directions. <coughs> and they might update their code. Other people say this might be another way to do it. So there's different ways to accomplish the same thing. This is over at Stack Overflow. It's free. You can set up an account. I've used it to get questions answered. I've also gone to other places to ask questions because JavaScript and all of this, you might read a 600-page book, but that still doesn't mean you're an expert in JavaScript. There's results that you're looking for that might not be easily found in a book. So people in a real world in the real world could have results. And I like also looking on the side here because people are asking related questions and it goes off to more questions and you learn more. So one place then, I haven't written some notes in a little while but I'm gonna write some notes here.
good places to ask questions about your JavaScript problems. We have Stack, uh, Stack Overflow, which is part of the larger Stack Exchange family. So stackoverflow.com is one of the most famous ones. You can go there, Stack Overflow. It's part of Stack Exchange where you can go to a specific section all about math. You can go to a specific question all a section all about grammar questions. There's all of these sections on specific topics, specifically on Linux, specifically on servers. Lots of really interesting ones. So not only are there really important technical questions being asked here, there's also other highly important questions, such as, was Gandalf meant to confront the Balrog? So people are going to ask all of these questions about all of the important things. We know Frodo was meant to have the ring, but did Tolkien ever discuss Gandalf traveling through Moira and having his... So everyone wants to know that. So here we have a huge answer with lots of citations and lots of votes. So that's uh, Stack Exchange. Another uh, place that's also good to ask is also at, is over at Quora.com. Q U A Q U O R A Quora.com. Another place where people, where people ask questions, finding answers. And la lastly, I don't have a direct link to this, but I'll put plus.google.com, which is Google Plus. Um, JavaScript community. Uh, Google Plus is a social network like Facebook, like Twitter, etc. Google Plus has communities where people congregate on a topic. Well, there's a JavaScript topic. There's a, there's a programming topic. There's an Android topic, a community. And you can go in there and, and uh, talk with the people. So I've gotten some great results also out of going over to Google Plus JavaScript community asking a question, people giving opinions, and me figuring out an answer. Because you have a book, you have an instructor, and all of that, but then when you're on your own, who do you turn to? Uh, you could, of course, just do a Google search. Most likely that'll just guide you back to Stack Overflow. But other possibilities are Quora <coughs> and Google+. So the result that we're looking at, if we go back to Notepad, is a variation on one of these stack exchange, one of these stack overflow answers. Let's break down what we actually have, because we saw the tutorials. This needs to create various objects or variables map, current position, direction, display, direction, service, and basic latitude, basic longitude. There's the possibility that if the person doesn't have uh, their, their map r working, their GPS, their location is off, we want to at least have some starting point. So this starting point is some latitude and longitude coordinates, which default down to the San Diego Convention Center. If you would like your default coordinates to be something else, you have to go look that up, plug it into these two variables, and then we'll have a basic starting point if none can be ascertained from the GPS of the device. Basically, then we've got some jQuery happening that as soon as possible, um, use this bit of JavaScript here, navigator.geolocation.getCurrentPosition. This is related to HTML5, the navigator object, geolocation, property, get current method, get current position method. So it's going to try to check whatever device this is running on, we're going to try to access the GPS chip. We then have two possibilities. There could either be a location success or a location error. This looks like you know, arguments to the function, but these are callback functions. These are results. 
there's either the result of location success or loc error. If it's a, you know, if you double click to select, if it's a location success, it should appear over here. Okay, loc success is a function defined here with a with a parameter position object. Trying to get the current position returns an object, either success or failure. So pass that object into loc success. Um, then we have to run initialize. Now what's initialize? We can double click initialize and it'll explain initialize. I'll get to that in a moment. Well, we have the possibility of success or error. Error could result from get current position. So loc error is defined here. We get it the error object. And so what happens is we, we're going to initialize our, our map. We're still going to initialize them either way. But if we have an error, we're going to uh, display that, uh, set ourselves up as the basic latitude and longitude. And it might be interesting to find out, well, what kind of error did we get? Let's do this. For fun, you can give yourself a new line uh, 60 and do console.log error. Display that error message in the console. It may be too technical or wordy for the user, but I want to see it in the console to try to figure out what was the error. But at the very least, we're initializing the map to a starting point, San Diego Convention Center. Basic lat, basic lawn, we saw up here. Those are the coordinates. If you want a different starting point, we just change those. back to location success. If we were successful, we initialize. We initialize with a latitude and a longitude. Same thing here, latitude, longitude. But in this case of success, we have the posi position object, which is storing coordinates. It's also storing elevation. Uh, I think a timestamp, even maybe direction of movement. So when we request get current position, that return that could return depending on the device, latitude, longitude, elevation, heading, direction, and timestamp, and a bunch of other things. So we're initializing with latitude and longitude coordinates. Why is it chords and not coordinates? That's just the way the specification is set up. Okay, so we need to say, well, what does initialize do? Initialize is defined right here, and it's several lines long. It goes from 63 to 87. Initialize takes the parameters latitude, longitude. We have the direction display object, which we are then creating a new instance of the Google Map direction renderer uh, object. And directions service. What do those do? I would have to go to the Google Maps API website and look up exactly what those things do. In short, the reason for an API is there's like a hundred things that this code can do. Here is the code of how to use it. How does it actually work? You might not need to know that, but here's how to use it. That's what happens over at the Google Maps API website. Object for display, object for service, object for position. Because we're going to need to display a map service, I think is which version of the, um, uh, which, you know, driving directions and such possibility. Position, map. We had the object of map, and here we're going to construct a map based on the div that's on screen. Zoom level 15. We have, I think, from 0 to... 17 or something, different levels of zoom. Higher numbers, lower numbers, I don't know which is which. I'll change it. I'll put zoom level, I don't know, 10. I can look it up in the documentation, of course, and it'll tell you, but if I just randomly put numbers, a 10 zoomed me out. I would think a lower number zooms you in, but it looks like a lower number zoom you out. 
there is a limit somewhere. I'm going to put 20. I don't, I don't. I think that's too far. Oh no, it's all the way down to the building. So different levels of zoom that we can start off with. 15 seemed okay, but that's the point there. If you didn't read the documentation, try changing it. See what happens. Center the map based on the current position because we can draw a map. And technically, the person doesn't have to be put on the map. They could be elsewhere. Here we're saying center the map on the current position based on the GPS. And there's another property here. The map object has a property of zoom and a value of 15 units. The map object has a property of center. Uh, the, the map object has a property of center with a value of current position property of map type ID. So over on the documentation, we can look up all the different types of maps that Google can give us. One of them is a road map. I don't have the other ones memorized. We can look it up. There's, you know, satellite map, road map, I don't know, bike map, elevation map. It's a different way to display the map. We actually then set the map based on all of these parameters. Current position. Did you think about clicking that little marker? If you put your mouse over the marker, you are here. You are here. Some of these things, you can change them and see what happens, experiment with them, like that. So very easily change that label right there. Some of these more complex ones, if they don't quite make sense on their own, I might not change them. Info window. There's some object called info window. This is based on the Google Map info window object. Um, Google Map Event Add Listener Current Position Marker Click. So this is not using uh, JavaScript. This is using a very, I mean, it's not using jQuery. It's using a, j a variation of JavaScript, whereas we had on, we had the on click. This is being done in a different way, but it's still a click. If there's a click, set content, current position, line break, latitude whatever the latitude is, longitude, whatever the longitude is, and then open or show that on screen. If you click, current position, latitude, longitude. I wanted that to say something else, or if I didn't want that to happen, maybe comment out this whole block here, and then it no longer is clickable. All of that was initialization. All of that happens, all of that is set up basically the moment that that the document goes live, that, that it gets loaded. We have calculate route function, which is actually, if we back up line 49, document on click We've seen this dot on click. This is being done on document. This is a variation of what we've seen. Button directions. So there's some object in the document called button directions. Once it's clicked, do the following. Prevent default. Uh, and then calculate route. Calculate route comes back here. This is the steps then to calculate a route, the turn-by-turn -turn directions. Create a variable called target destination based on the value of the input box on screen. When we did that uh, random name picker, we had an input box, we had to save those names in an array, then we could display them. This is similar to that in that there's an input box we load the value of that input box into a variable in this case remember map destination is hidden if I 
back up to that. That's the one with target or display none. Those things are hidden. They don't need to be changed. There's a value on line 25. So whatever value there is is saved. That's that's uh, what we're requesting here. <clears throat> then we've got an if statement that asks for a few things. It should have been broken up into uh, some parentheses, maybe. Uh, but what we're looking at is we've got this time double ampersands. We have double pipes, which means or. And now we've got double ampersand, which means and. When we had is it undefined or null or empty, any one of those three is true, then we have bad input. Here we're saying something and something and something and something must be true. If any one of these is false, it automatically goes to else. All of these conditions have to be true, and then it'll do the if portion. See how we've got if, and then we've got else. I'm actually down here, else. I'll back up in a moment. But we're checking for po four possibilities. All possibilities, all four need to be true. If any of those is false, it jumps down here. Don't display results. There's no results to display. Don't display results. If all four of these are true, do the following. But what's it ask, what it's asking for? Current position. Is there a current position? Does a current position exist? So let me put it like this. Perhaps this might be this might make more sense here. Just gonna put a couple of parentheses between the ands. Current position. If if we ask, what's that called? I think it's called a unary. Operator. This is basically asking, does current position exist? Yes. This one right here? Uh, yes. Yes, good point. It should be right here and oops, right here and right here. Yes. And then one more at the end over here. So you can put these in or, or not if you want, but I'm just putting them in here to maybe make more sense. We're checking, does current position exist? It has to be true. So it should be true regardless because it either will get a position from the GPS or from the basic latitude and longitude that we have at the top. And what has to exist is that current position is not empty. So if it's not empty, that means we have coordinates. So we need to have a current, the users, wherever they're standing, and it can't be empty. And we have to have a target destination, which should never fail, because we've hard-coded it into the input box. And it should not be empty, if all four of those are true. Then we do the, the following. which is to create a var object of request in JSON format. We'll talk about JSON later. This is JSON format. In short, it's sort of like an array, vaguely. It's a JavaScript object. JSON is JavaScript object notation. We'll have an, an exercise on it later. But it's basically key and value pairs. We have um, origin, value, or property with uh, current position value, comma, destination, comma, travel mode, no comma. So the request is where's our starting point, where's our ending point, what's our travel mode, Google Map, driving mode, because we can have bus mode, driving mode, biking mode, flying mode, I guess. I don't know them all, but again, we can look it up in the documentation. Direction service route. Let's 
set up a route. Dot route is something defined in the J in the in the Google Map API, which takes the um, parameter of request, which is that object built out of those pieces, it has a callback function, which is a, a result, and the result is either response. Uh, response and status. So we get two, two results back. We get a status. So then here it checks the status. Did we get a status of OK? Maybe Google Maps is broken at the moment, so we get a result back of, of uh, error. Um, that has an if else check. If we did get an OK result back from Google Maps, do this. If we didn't get an OK result, do that, which is don't display the results. There's nothing to display. The OK result, directions display set panel, um, this, uh, this will set us up to display. Uh, a panel of directions on screen in the div. Directions display set directions, which is basically show it on screen, show it in the panel. There's some commented stuff here we'll get back to in a moment. And then results show. So if all of these things worked, we have GPS coordinates, we have a response from Google, show the directions. There's a div that is hidden, show it. If any of these things fail, don't show it. Don't show it. In our testing purposes at the moment, it doesn't... Well, let, let me confirm with you guys. If you... Um, if you... If you opened up the file and you ran it in Firefox, did it give you directions or nothing happened? And then if you checked it on Chrome, nothing happened either? Okay, that's normal-ish, again, because of the change to the, to the API. But uh, the example project on, on your device sh should work. It should give you turn-by-turn -turn directions. Also, because it's not on a real server, it doesn't quite work also. It should be on a server. And now another change that they've made is this should also now be on a secure server, HTTPS. So very recently, Google started to really sort of clamp this down. You used to be able to use it on a non-secure server, and you used to be able to use it without registering to use it. Very recently, like in the last three months, they've really made it more, um, uh, what's the term, more, um, not limited, but more, um, you know, defined. And so it doesn't quite work. If you check the console, you do get a result it's saying position error. Um, in, uh, in Chrome, and then I get a little pop-up over here on Chrome. Um, the site's been blocked because it's not on a secure server. And it's giving me results about you don't have an API. You haven't registered to use the map. for the moment. And this is also saying that um, there's no, no API, so that's okay. Um, this this map then, as I said, is our starting point. It's mostly set up to work. If you wanted to change the details of it, you see the various parts where you can change the details. The big thing that's different also is that it, there's no uh, API key. If you look on line uh, 36, line 36 has the connection to the Google APIs, and it has a, a parameter, v3, 
we're not going to change it yet, but we would then add another one. Um, and uh, I think it's API key. Again, don't change this yet. Uh, but we would need to supply here our own unique identifier to show that this we are this developer, we are trying to use the Google map, it's no longer you know willy-nilly anyone can use it, we need to register here's our credential. Then it would fully work. We're, we're not going to quite do that yet. But if you're curious, Google API map warning, no API key, with a link to tell you here's what you're missing. You need the API key, follow these instructions which require creating a Google developer account, creating a project, generating a new key, copying and pasting that key into your code, and then it'll work. I'm not quite going to do it yet. I encourage you to look at this, to look at this documentation. We will do it eventually. We must do it if we want it to really work in our real apps eventually. See that? Question key, your API. So it's not super complex, but we're not going to do it yet. It takes a little time. You're going to explore that on your own, and we will do it when it's time to put it into our real app. At least what I want to do is this map file is in my project folder, but it's not referenced yet from my main index file. And I have the option of either incorporating the map code into the index code, integrating it that way, or simply linking from index to map. So that's what we'll do. From our index file, we'll create a button and we'll link to the map file. But since it breaks out of the SPA, the single page app, we have to address that. Let's get back into our index file. Go all the way to the bottom, line 311. And we'll add a link to um, directions. This is going to be a button to go to get directions for the campus. It's a button, so href map. Dot HTML. We're pointing it out to an external file. It's not internal, so it doesn't have the pound sign. We need a data role of button if we want it to look like a button. We need a data role or a data icon. Choose an icon. We have one called navigation that creates a little map icon. We don't need a data transition because it we won't be able to do transitions once we leave our index file. Icon navigation but because it's an external link uh, it shouldn't matter where we put it but I'll put it right after the href rel external
Okay, so this links then to my external file. There's a go back button. Comes back here. In the map file, uh, one quick thing, uh, line 16, here's our go back button. It's um, data roll button, data icon, back. But there's a little bit of inline JavaScript. This is probably the only place we'll have that. We usually have uh, embedded or external JavaScript. Here it's a very easy uh, reason to use it. So we've got JavaScript keyword and then the JavaScript command. We've got history object dot go back method. So we have navigator object and document object and we have window object. We have history. We can affect or we can work with the history that the person is, is creating as they visit page to page to page to page. As I go from screen to screen, I've got a history state. This stuff is being saved in history. So when I go from this document to that document, there's history that I came from a different page. This then has go negative one. Go one page back in history. I came from index.html to go into map.html. Go negative one takes me back to index. It'll get weirder if you put other numbers there, of course, because unless there is, unless you know that there's a more history, that might not be a good idea. And I think there's even other parameters we can put here um, besides numbers, like back to the first page and such. So we can't quite um, show how this works, but what happens with the line 103, this has been commented out. This is optional. Display step-by-step -step directions as basic JavaScript pop-ups. So this, is, uh, this would be the turn-by-turn -turn directions if you really want that. It's not going to speak to people and such. What's happening here is uh, a var is created called my route. And my route is an object uh, that is made of response. We get the callback of status and the callback of response. What is the what is the result uh, object that we get? It has routes and it has legs. This can be complex. Like we can have multiple routes set up. What's the fastest way to get from city hall to the firehouse, the fire station, you could take Main Street or you could take First Street. You know, we have different routes. Here it's saying take the first route, starting, you know, there's zero, there's one, two, three. We're taking the zero with route. And there's legs. Each particular piece of the road that you take is a leg. Start on Main Street and go 100 feet to the driveway. Then go one mile to the right on Second Street then go whatever on 3rd Avenue. Those are the legs of the route. So we're saying save all of the legs, or uh, yeah, save all of the legs of the first route <coughs> in that object. And then we're going to have a force statement to do something over and over. Starting from 0 and uh, whatever number of steps we have, because there's legs and steps. I forget the difference here, but there's steps, which has a length. Right? Okay, I think steps is actually the drive this far, then that far, then that far. Legs, don't remember exactly what it is. But uh, for as many steps as we have in the driving, from zero to X number of steps, do the following. A simple pop-up that says, 
show the instructions of the first step. So it'll pop up, drive um, you know, one mile north. You close that pop-up. And then it'll pop up, then drive two miles west. You close that, and then the next pop-up. So this is how we can pop up to show you actual step by step. This can be done in different ways, but it's just a pop-up at the moment. So you see, we could have um, written, researched, first of all, and written all of this code. In By itself, it's 37 to 119. It's nearly 100 lines of JavaScript code just for that map stuff. So we have this starting point that if we understand what it's doing, we can change it to our will. And even if all of that still seems pretty confusing, really, the only thing you would most likely need to change is on line 25. What's the ending? What's the destination? What's the ending point? And that's simply putting a valid address. The rest of the map works. And so it's like a black box. Um, you know, it just works. There's something inside of it. You don't need to know exactly how it works, but it does what you need it to do. And if you want us to know exactly how it works and to change things that I might not have covered, we go over to the documentation, we spend uh, you know, a quiet night by the fireplace and read the whole thing, and then we'll become a pro on Google Maps. As long as we've got our index linked to it, this is all we really need it for. We'll get it to fully function once we create an API key, but I would recommend over the weekend look at that documentation for the API key. We will do it together once we actually make it into the app so that we want it to work for real. That'll be later on. We'll take another break in a moment, but any questions at this point? So, okay. It's 8.15. We'll take a break until 8.25. Uh, when we come back, then we will do user agent detection to put the icing on the cake of our, of our adaptive web design project. So we're back at 825.